all right my sql learners so this video is a continuation of my last video or last section a quick recap of what i did in the last section i basically created a logical design of an e-commerce website so what you're looking at is a table that i started with it's a denormalized table and we basically took this denormalized table and we normalized it as you can see there is four versions of this table i'm calling this table orders table so there is four different versions and i with each iteration i took out repeating data so finally we landed with four tables apart from the original orders table so now we have also customers products and payments in this video i'm going to take this now all these tables and I'm going to take the structure and I am going to create a logical design. Okay, so let's actually go to MySQL Workbench and I am already connected to a database. What I am going to do is go to File and go to New Model. So here we can add a new ER diagram, an entity relationship diagram and let's call this database uh, ecom store something like that so let's go ahead and start creating our tables now i'm not going to be creating all four tables that would take probably more time or long and i'm going to be creating a couple of tables and that should be enough for you to understand how we're doing this so let's just start with the customers table so the customer table has five columns so this is the icon for creating a new table you can drag and drop or you can try to draw and then now double click and then create a table called customer and here we can start putting the table uh, the column names customer id and then this is going to be populated by a sequence so sequence is a database object and it's going to be a uh, an integer so we can leave it as this and we can have it as a primary key that's fine and a primary key has to be populated it cannot be null so that is automatically selected so the next one is customer name we could split that into first name and then we can choose varchar and maybe give a little bit more room as in the the length for the name and then last name Again, a watch are 100 and then all these cannot be null so we can choose not null constraint so these are different constraints which are available let's go ahead with the next one address again address and if you remember I talked about atomicity so you want your columns to be you know atomic in in the sense that here Basically, the whole address is packed into one column. Good practice to actually split that into atomic columns, as in address separately, city separately, state separately, and then zip code separately. So we have all these, and of course, none of these can be null and what else is there so customer phone number phone number is going to be all numbers but then i want to make it 10 numbers of course not null and customer email so we can just say email id 100 make it not null so since id is the primary key here or customer id i want to make sure that that we have a constraint to avoid repeating customer information for example if you have one customer's data for ID 1 I don't want the same customer customers data to repeat for I, a different ID for example ID 2 so I'm going to actually make the email ID unique for each record over here and then may all maybe phone number also so these are all unique key constraints or unique constraints that's it so we have the customers table created so let's go back and see what else we have so let's now create 
uh, I would say product and then you basically do the same thing select that which is for creating a new table and then now here you can just draw then this one I'm going to call it product then we want to go through the same uh, process and then put the product column names in there And if you're wondering, this is the same customer ID column that we added over here. And we are going to make that a foreign key in a minute. Actually. So let's go ahead and split that into multiple columns because again, everything is packed into one column, which is not a good practice. So let's say, let's call it, uh, credit card number you know if the customer is using PayPal then we need their email so we can use email ID over here so this can be null or not null based on what payment type is being used so that's okay. So expiration date is going to be a date column. So let's actually change that. So if you're not sure, you can hit that uh, the drop down and then choose a proper data type for each. The other thing that I mentioned, which is uh, basically about foreign key. Uh, this customer ID is the same as what we added over here. So let's actually make that customer ID a foreign key. So we can just call it customer ID foreign key one. And then the table that is going to be referenced is the customers. And the column is going to be customer ID. And that's it. So you can see that now we have a connection or a relation between these two tables. I'm going to actually just add the orders table as well. I've created the orders table as well, which is the main table. And I'm going to now uh, create some foreign keys for the orders. Everything is done. Uh, if you want to create any indexes at this point, you can do that. So I guess we are done. So we uh, basically added four tables to our logical design these four tables and then we have created columns and then defined their data types and also we created the foreign keys and of course primary key and unique key for each of the tables and you can see the the foreign key relationship uh, you know clearly showing here and uh, that's you know that's what you would do to create a data model uh, all right so now actually let's just go ahead and create a SQL script for this data model so you go to database and then do forward engineer and then basically you provide the, the database details where you want to create this uh, these tables or the schema so this is these are my details continue let's go to the next one provide the password all right now we are connected i had to try the password two three times all right 
and this has basically created a SQL script for us to create the schema and the tables with all the primary key, unique key and foreign key constraints. So what we can do is we can just uh, continue and then now the database or the schema is created as it goes through and then executes that script and close and now you can see these tables are actually created so you can even go to your SQL editor and then you can start querying your um, you can start querying your tables there you go so you the query came back of course there is no data in it and you can now start using your uh, database so we actually successfully created the basic schema or designed the data model for this e-commerce website